Welcome to the Season of Self Love Podcast. I am your host, Naomi Banks, and I am thrilled to have you join me on this transformative journey. You see, every day we dive into a powerful conversation about self discovery, healing, and empowerment. This podcast is brought to you by Ask Naomi and Elevate Me Self Discovery, where we believe that loving yourself is the first step to living a fulfilling life. You can expect insightful discussions, practical tips, and inspiring stories. Plus, we occasionally welcome special guests who will share their unique perspectives on self-love and personal growth. So get comfy, grab your favorite beverage, and let's embark on this journey together. Because it's time to embrace the beautiful person that you are. So let's elevate our lives one episode at a time. Now let's get started. All right, well, welcome back to the Season of Self Love Podcast. I am your host, Naomi Banks, and I am here to guide you through another journey into self-discovery and mental health. Today, we are exploring the act of balancing life and how we can make enjoying life a little easier and a little more joyful. But today, I am so thrilled to introduce a very special guest. That's Dr. Angelo Belenta, uh, a renowned consultant, psychologist, and author of You're Making This Way Too Hard. Dr. Valente has dedicated his career to helping individuals and organizations thrive by simplifying the complexities of life. But before we dive into that, let's take a quick break before we bring the doctor on, all right? It's your girl, you got his number banks here on the Season of Self Love podcast, and we'll be Exciting right Exciting news, everyone. Yeah. Naomi Banks, your favorite transitional life and relationship coach and the inspiring host of the Season of Self Love podcast has just released another incredible resource for your personal growth journey in producing her latest transformational ebook and workbook, Balancing Up, a guide to harmonizing your life. This 50-page guide is designed to help you navigate the complexities of life, bringing balance and harmony into your everyday experience. Perfectly paired with our amazing new series for this month, The Act of Balancing Life. This workbook is packed with practical exercises, insightful prompts, and valuable tools to empower you on your path to self-discovery and fulfillment. Don't miss out on this opportunity to invest in yourself and enhance your journey toward a balanced life. Balancing Act is available now. Grab your copy today and step into a world of harmony and self-love. Are you ready to embark on a journey toward harmony and balance? Join us for our exciting new challenge, the 21 Days Living Balance. Challenge on the Season of Self-Love podcast. As part of our monthly series, The Act of Balancing Life, this challenge will guide you through daily practices designed to help you harmonize your mind, body, and spirit. Whether you're juggling work, relationships, or self-care, we're here to support you every step of the way. Don't wait sign up now to take part in this transformative experience starting October 1st. Together, we'll build a community of balance. Seekers ready to embrace joy and self-discovery. Visit our website or click the link in our bio to join the challenge today. Let's find our balance together. What are some common barriers that prevent people from expressing... Hey, it's your girl, you got it's Nami Banks here from the Season of Self Love podcast. Yeah, I would say remorse. So shame and guilt is a very dividing emotional... And these are one of the many amazing conversations that we have every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Season of Self Love podcast with myself, Naomi Banks, as well as our resident therapist, Dr. Will Washington of Washington Wellness Institute. Come by. reality of our relationship with people. Come by. A lot of times we're afraid of how people look at us. And so that compassion can't enter. You can hit us on the website, the Season of Self Love podcast. Dot com. Let me ask you this with the truth. Is it the all right, well, welcome back. It's your girl, Goddess Nami Banks here on the Season of Self Love podcast. And today we're talking about finding your easy way to enjoy life. And I'm so dr- thrilled to introduce a very special guest, Dr. Angelo Valente. And I hope I'm saying his name right. I, I bush up everyone's name. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job. <laughs> it's just fine. <laughs> Thank you. It was so funny because I know we did a little quick talk in the beginning, you know, before we went live. And I just kept saying your name over and over in, in my head. Then once I pushed the intro, then I said, oh, I just forgot how to pronounce his name. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you, did, you did fine. Believe me, my name has been butchered for <laughs> my whole life, basically. 
Well, again, thank you and welcome to the season of love. Um, your book, You're Making This Hard, uh, Way Too Hard. I love that title and I cannot wait till we get more in detail of this book. All right. But before then, can we take a quick moment right now and just take, you know, so we can center ourselves before we get into topic. Okay. Sure. All right. Thank you. Take a deep breath in and hold it. Then slowly exhale. With each breath, I want you to feel any tension melting away. I want you to imagine a wave of calm spreading from the crown of your head down to your toes. And as you breathe in, I want you to think about peace. Peace. And as you breathe out, I want you to release what doesn't serve you. I want you to take a nice breath in again through your nose. Exhale with your mouth, out your mouth. And I want you to whisper to yourself, I am worthy of joyful life. Let this affirmation fill you with warmth and belief in your power to find balance and happiness. Breathe one more time in, deep breath. Out. Now open your eyes and bring you back to the present moment. All right, thank you for joining me in that moment. If you're new here to the Season of Seth Love Podcast, it's something that we do every day, Monday through Friday, just to help center ourselves before we get into topic today. Again, we're going to welcome Dr. Valenti. He's a one, it was so wonderful to have you here with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm really excited to be here. And I got to tell you, the meditation moment was wonderful. Um, I, I kind of do that in my own mind yeah. every morning. But yeah. to hear it verbally, it, it really is nice. Thank you. Thank I'm you. in a good, good spot right now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sometimes we need that. <laughs> well, to start off, could you share a little bit about your journey and what led you to write your book? Sure. My journey, uh, like most people's journey, was not a straight line from where I started <laughs> to, to where I am now. Uh, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I went to Case Western Reserve University, got a bachelor's degree in psychology, and that was 1971. Um, yeah, oh, I'm old, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, with an undergraduate degree in psychology, about the only thing that makes that degree worthwhile is if you go to graduate school. So I went to graduate school at the University of Georgia, got a master's degree and a PhD, and uh, that was one of really my first uh, experience with uh, culture shock because mm. Cleveland, Ohio and Athens, Georgia could not be more different. Yeah. Than what, I can imagine. Uh, yes. Uh, but I discovered very quickly that I enjoy the lifestyle of the South and the weather uh, mm. and, and the level of politeness. I don't know where you're located, but uh, I just think people – at that time, and I think still today, yeah. are more polite. They are in the South than people are in the North. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and I can say that because I live both places, and I travel all over the place. Uh, so, got my PhD at Georgia, and then taught college at Oklahoma City University for four years. I taught psychology, and I was chairman of the psych department there for a few years. And in the late seventies, um, the economy was not. It was worse than it is now, but there were some similarities. Inflation was pretty high and interest rates were pretty high. I had two kids and uh, realized I couldn't raise them in the way that I wanted to raise them. Uh, So I left academia and I joined a consulting firm and they kind of taught me how to work with businesses. And I fell in Mm -hmm. love with it. I really enjoyed helping businesses because businesses are nothing more than accumulations of people. Mm. businesses are people you don't mm. think of them that way but they are and if if i can help the people in a business 
be happier as well as more productive, but also happier and more fulfilled in their role. Yeah. And I feel like I'm doing something worthwhile because people spend eight to 10 hours a day at their job. They spend more time at their job than they do at home. So uh, that's what got me into consulting. And in 1982, I had an opportunity to set up my own consulting business in Nashville. So I was in Memphis, Tennessee at the time, and I moved from Memphis to Nashville and set up my own shop, the company psychologist. And I've been doing that ever since 1982. Now, now, the book. Now, the where book. does it come in? Where does the book come in? Because okay. I love this title. I love this title. <laughs> is, is it okay if I show it on camera? Oh, yes, please. please okay. yes. The full title of the book is You're Making This Way Too Hard. Find Your Easy Way to Enjoy Life. Mm. And why did I write this book? I wrote the book because in my consulting and my coaching practices, I found more and more people who were successful by what society defines as success. They had all the trappings of success, mm -hmm. uh, but they just weren't enjoying their life. They weren't enjoying the fruits of their labor. They seemed to be stressed, worried. They were concerned about what other people thought of them. They had self-doubt. They had anxiety. They had all of the things that you would think success would solve didn't solve any of it. So that's why I wrote the book. And if, if you look at the title, the full title of the book is uh, you're making this way too hard. Find your easy way to enjoy life. And the, the, the enjoy life is spelled funny. It's spelled N J O Y L F E. And the reason I spelled it that way is because that's my license plate on my car. Okay. In life. And I've had it on every car I've had since 1991. And uh, I'll tell you a little story in my book uh, about that was I was, I'm a car guy. I've always had nice cars. That's how mm -hmm. I used to overspend. <laughs> Everybody's got a, a kind of overspending addiction and cars happen to be mine. I was uh, at the time I had a Mercedes convertible and I was in the parking lot of a fast of a, a casual dining restaurant. I was picking up a to go order and I come out and there's a note on my car. And it said, I would enjoy life too if I had millions in the bank and drove $110,000 Mercedes. Mm -hmm. So I look around, didn't, didn't see anybody, but I really wanted to talk to that person. Right. I wanted to tell them that they had cause and effect backwards. Mm. I don't enjoy life because I have whatever it is that I have. I have whatever I have because I enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, you've got to have it inside first. And you can enjoy life whether you have a lot or whether you have a little or whether you have nothing. It's a mindset. Mm -hmm. So what I uh, wanted to share are some, some personal stories and my experience working with people and organizations for 40 something years is that people are making it harder on themselves than is necessary. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I totally agree when you, when you say that, cause I know I've been very guilty of that. That one, that thing is um, when people look at my whole resume and they say, you are so successful. You should be very happy in where you at now in your life. Honestly, it took me a long time to be happy right now in this life. And that's because just as you were saying, we we not only go on what we feel what we we should have to make us happy, but also what society says that we should have to yes. make us happy. When I sit and I compare my life to when I was uh, a single mother, just newly divorced, didn't have anything, no money at all. I was at my happiest time in moments before I got really started getting successful and money came in. You know what I'm saying? And I had the money to have everything in the world. I was more happier then than I, I was now, you know, just in comparison of them all. Because it's like once you start to get that success, now it's like an addiction. Like you want to keep that success. 
because if any time or any moment that you get you gear towards the opposite way, then there's just all hell that breaks loose, not within you, but outside of everything. But then that's when you start to allow all of that outside of you come into wreck what you got going on here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And if you if you talk to uh, some of the most successful people in the world, uh, again, by society's definition, mm -hmm. and you ask them, what's fun about you? What do you enjoy about your life? And they'll say the struggle, the journey. Yeah. I mean, most most of the people, most of the billionaires in this country and in the world were broke at one time or another. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been broke three or four times, mm -hmm. but it's the challenge, the journey, yeah. the, uh, that's what gets their juices flowing. Yeah. And, you know, that's what they find the pleasure in, you know, uh, Apple started in the, in, garage. in a garage. Mm -hmm. If you look at pictures of Jeff Bezos, when he started Amazon, he's sitting at a little desk with a bunch of books around him and he's got a handwritten sign that says Amazon on top of his desk of his death. He yeah. didn't know. They don't, they didn't know. Right. Whether they were going to be successful or not, but they were having a good time trying. Yes. The yes. journey is what was giving them enjoyment yes. and fulfillment in their life. And I really think that's what life is all about the journey. It's not about the destination. And too many people focus on if I just get to here, then I'll be happy. And what they don't realize is there looks a lot like where you are now, right. except you got more overhead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is so true. And just as you said that, uh, and that statement, that quote that we have, it's not about the destination, but it's about the journey. My question is, and honestly, and this is even for my listeners out there, is there a true destination? No. No. There's never a destination. No. So it's the like, only, the, what are we the, doing? Only de the only destination is when you're six feet under. That's the end of the journey. Other than that, you know, I'm, as I mentioned, and uh, I'm getting older by the minute, but I'm, you know, I'm 75 years old and I'm still working. And people ask me all the time if I haven't seen them for a while, they say, Are you still working? And I say, Yeah, I'm still working. You know, my funeral and my retirement party are going to be on the same day. Because <laughs> I, I just love what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, if I'm, I'm helping people yeah. every day. And, you know, when I get uh, some feedback from one of my clients on something that I've done that helped them out. I mean, that's gold to me. That's that's uh, that's why I do what I do. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, no, the journey, the journey never ends. And when one, even if one journey, like you mentioned, you got divorced, I, I got a divorce at one time. That's the end of one journey, mm -hmm. but it's the beginning of another yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And then when you have kids, that's, that's, that's a thing. journey with, with a lot of <laughs> little side trips <laughs> along, the way, <laughs> along the way. Um, so the journeys are, are, they're ongoing. They're always there. It, but, and the, the secret is to approach them the right way, approach them with a positive attitude and with an attitude of this is going to help me grow as a person. It's going to help me get better and it's going to help me enjoy my life more. The, the most miserable, Ooh. I lost you. Well, I'll just keep talking just in case. Uh, where was I? Uh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. It's all right. I'm back. So okay. <laughs> where, where were we? I was just mumbling. You're, I hope you can edit that out. Right. I'm going to try to. Yeah, I can't. I can't. The, the, the funny thing is that I don't know what's going on here with my, my technical thing. I, I will edit all of this out. 
but I had this problem um, yesterday and day before yesterday. So I don't know. I saw the the internet company around the corner. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, that, so, so your that, neighbors are messing up your internet, right? Yeah. So this yeah. very well could be it. But I I thought you can hear me, so I was just telling you just to keep talking, so we can kind of you know just do it like that. But that's all right. That's don't don't worry about it. Don't don't. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of. I kind of got spooked a little bit and I lost my, I lost my train. I <laughs> says, wait a minute. I don't want to be on here all by myself. I have my own podcast if I want to do that. Yeah, I saw your face. She was like, uh-oh, where's she going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we're back. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start off with this question. And it's the question just to add on to with your book and speaking about your book. I know you talk about a lot about finding the easy way to joy, but what are some of the strategies that you suggest for people looking to simplify their life and focus on what truly brings them happiness? Well, that's a great question. And the, the title of your podcast is an excellent starting point where you need to learn to love yourself and take care of yourself. I put self-love and self-care in the same bucket. I think it's very important for a person to love yourself and it's hard with all the noise out there. Sometimes the noise could be coming from your friends, could be coming from your family, could be coming from social media, could be coming from your boss. I mean, it's coming from everywhere. And if you let it, you have to develop a thick skin and a strong filter yeah. where you're not taking everything that people say or how they treat you so seriously. And think about yourself first. Yeah. I don't think you can't take care of anybody else unless you take care of yourself first. Right? Right. So doing simple things like take a nap in the afternoon, recharge your batteries a little bit, mm -hmm. try to eat a little bit better. And I'm not a fanatic about you have to go on this diet or that diet, but everybody can eat a little bit better than what yeah. they're eating now, right? Maybe pass McDonald's three times a week instead of going every day. I mean, just little things. Take a walk. Right. And the best, I take a walk every morning around a lake at a little state park in Nashville. And I start about quarter to seven and I'm done about seven 30 quarter to eight. It's two and a half mile walk. It's delightful. I see deer. I see turkeys. I see every once in a while, I see a bald Eagle. And it just puts me in the right frame of mind to start the day. And that's, that's yeah. totally, if you want to use the word selfish, I don't, I don't think of it as selfish. I think of it as self care. Yeah. But that's me. That's me, myself, by myself. Although there are other people there, they're all by themselves too. And they're they're on their morning walk, meditation, whatever you want to call it. And some of them are, every once in a while, you'll see somebody who's on a big, important phone call while they're walking, which to me kind of defeats the purpose. Um, I think if you're going to, if you're going to go to, to a peaceful place, you should go there in peace. That's and, true reflection mm -hmm. um you can't get in touch with nature if you're worried you know if you're thinking about the next thing you're going to say on a phone right. call right yeah so that you know those are some simple things and uh, one of the most important things anybody can do nobody in your audience is not on social media everybody's on social media of one type or another i'm you. i'm guessing Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have found you if they weren't on social media, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. The problem with social media is people take social media too seriously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they see these videos of people jetting off to here and they have this house and they're wearing this dress and they're doing this and doing that. And they think that's real. They don't realize that's all staged. At, they're watching little mini movies. They're not watching real life and, they're, mm -hmm. and they, they think they don't measure up compared to compared, yeah that mm -hmm. which isn't real to begin with so 
don't take social media too seriously and absolutely stop comparing yourself to other people mm -hmm. because that's a game you can't win. Mm -hmm. There's, a, there's always somebody smarter, somebody richer, somebody prettier, somebody more athletic, you, you name it. There's somebody that's better at it than you. Mm -hmm. So quit worrying about it. Just think about being the best version of yourself that you could be. Right. And that's going to be plenty good enough. And if you can find inner peace and contentment and self-love, yeah. you'll find that people are going to want to compare themselves to you. You're not going to be comparing yourselves to them because they're going to see how you're living your life and how mm -hmm. you're just your body language, your, how you treat other people. If you're at peace, it's very easy to be kind and nice and empathetic to other people if yeah. you're at peace with yourself. Most of the anger that you see people display in the news, in real life, on social media is anger at themselves directed outward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not really angry at the object or the target that they're purportedly angry at. They're yeah. angry at themselves. If you're not angry with yourself, you're not going to be angry with anybody else. I mean, you might exactly. get pissed off every once in a while, but you're not going to be truly angry. Right. You know, when, when I thought about creating the season of self love and it, and, and I tell this story all the time, but uh, it started off just to be a, a one month series that I was doing on my other podcast, Acts Nine Bridge and Gap. And it was just something that I wanted to truly talk about self-love because I knew myself was going through a self-love journey, had been going through it for the past what, eight, nine years, if not longer. And so I knew that um, I've had millions, I've lost millions. So I knew where I was at in, in this moment, I had to love myself without any of those things. So how do I get there? You know, how do I get there? How do I get to loving myself? So when all of these things do come back, that now I'm really able to enjoy that in, in life with myself. A lot of times you have, as you said before, we have millionaires, you have billionaires that have all of this money, but are not happy. And the reason why they are not happy is because they don't love themselves. They don't even understand how to love themselves. Right. They're not healed, they're not, none of those things. And so that's why I created the season of self-love for that very, for that very reason. And so how I structure the different um, months is through different series. So last season, we kind of broke it down where we were doing affirmations. And so it's more of the build up, the mindset, the mental, right. that one. Now we started off um, in September, we started off with the very first one was healing beyond betrayal, beyond, beyond the betrayal. So a lot of times we not only need to forgive others, but we need to forgive ourselves as well. So even through the healing process, there's still things that we have to do within ourselves too. You know, when we have those little triggers, you know, those triggers. Mm -hmm. that come oh up. yeah. You know, and before we know it, we, we're blaming ourselves and we blaming ourselves because we know I gave that other person a chance or I saw, you know, I saw the benefit of it and such and such and such. But instead of you stepping back and realizing what that is, you know, about another perspective from it, you know, or how to heal from it. So in that, we're, we talk about that. And then this month, this month is all about the, the act of balancing life. So it's not only the financial, the, the spiritual, the mental, all of that. How can we live a life peaceful? That's why I love your book um, about making it hard because I am known for making my shit hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's... It's almost a natural tendency of people to overcomplicate things. Yes. And the, 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 they think to themselves, the answer can't be that easy. <laughs> well, well so, sometimes it is. And one of the things that people can do that is, is really easy, if they just make a point of doing it, is say good things about yourself to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. positive self-talk, right? It's, it's yeah. almost a cliche, but yeah. so many people run themselves down or don't even know how to take a compliment. Mm -hmm. If somebody gives you a compliment, the only thing you're supposed to say is thank you. Yeah. Right. And they say, mm -hmm. Oh, it's nothing. Or I got lucky or something. 
baloney. Just say thank you. Take yeah. take the win. Take the compliment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm laughing. Why I'm laughing is because I just had this vision. My mom, she was she's 73 and she was just diagnosed with um, Alzheimer's dementia. Right. And she has this whole different new personality that I'm not used to. Um, but it's very um I want to say not childish, but very young, very young. So when you say, oh, you look so pretty today. Oh, I know. And beforehand, she would not do that. Beforehand, she was very modest. Oh, well, thank you. You know, now it's like, oh, I know. <laughs> well, I think uh, one, of the, one of the things I mentioned in my book is that if you want to find joy in your life, try to remember what you felt like when you were five, six, seven years old, because mm -hmm. most five, six, seven year old kids are happy, joyful all yeah. the time, unless their parents yeah. kind of grind it out of them over time. I think if you yeah. let people, if you let little kids be little kids, they're going to find a way to, to find joy in their life. Yeah. And unfortunately it gets socialized out of us over the years and if you can rekindle that that's kind of the 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 essence of my book is to kind of rekindle the joy you felt at some point in your life it's in there somewhere right you've just got to pull it back out yeah yeah y'all hear that it's in there somewhere so let me go here i want to go back to your book one more time i want to go back to so you speak about the importance of making right choices in who you bring into our personal and professional lives. Yes. How can someone ensure that they are making a decision that is aligned with their values? Well, you're going to find that that people, there are people who meet your healthy needs and there are people who meet your neurotic needs. And unfortunately, the people that meet your neurotic needs sometimes are more exciting. They're more unpredictable. You know, they can get your adrenaline flowing. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people who meet your healthy needs might be quote unquote boring, not mm -hmm. that in, but those are the people uh, who are going to be with you through the good times and the bad times. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think that people find is when they de begin to develop more self-love, which in confidence comes with that. And it's a quiet self-confidence. It's not a bragging self-confidence and if you if you're you know talking positive about yourself and your outlook on life changes where you you are making better decisions and one of the great decisions people can make is learn how to say no yeah. don't feel like you have to be all things to all people or please people all the time learn to, if you learn to say no you'll find that some of your superficial associations the people you thought were your friends will kind of drift away mm -hmm. and you'll get a new circle of friends who, and you want to associate yourself with positive, upbeat, happy people. Yeah. I mean, the, the old saying that misery loves company is wrong. Misery loves miserable company. Mm. You know, miserable people don't want, don't, they don't want to be around happy people and happy people don't want to be around miserable people. Mm -hmm. So once you develop that positive attitude and you're walking around with a smile on your face and you're whistling and you're, you're going to find that you'll be attracted to similar type people and yeah. they'll be attracted to you, but you're going to lose some of those toxic people along the way. And the, the sooner you can jettison the toxic people from your life, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. Yeah. So let them family and friends go. No. <laughs> Well, you can't let you, you can let your friends go. You can't let your family go. You're kind of stuck with them, but you can change the way you interact with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even, even if it's your parent, if, if it's one of your parents, that's giving you a hard time about something. If you just say, well, you're entitled to your opinion and just go on, just go on. Yeah, <laughs> right? just go, on. go on with your life. Just go on. Uh, you know, so many people get hung up on the past. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and, yeah. and I tell uh, one of the lines in my book is the past can either be your teacher or your jailer, but Ooh. you have, you have to make the choice. Say that one more time. Say that one more time. The past can either be your teacher or your jailer. Mm. You have to make the choice. I like that. 
I like that. Feel free to use it anytime. Yeah, you want. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so let's move on to another huge aspect of life. That's money. Money. You know, but money. So you said the only problems money solves are money problems. So can you expand on that? Especially sure. on how to how people can manage financial stress without overwhelming their emotional well-being. Well, money is, is kind of a hot topic because it's come to be how we measure a person's worth. Mm -hmm. And I've been preaching for 40 years that a person's self-worth should not be equated to their net worth. Yeah. And so many people see if, if I just had $10 million, I'd be happy. Yeah. Well, look around at how many people who have more than $10 million and you notice how unhappy they are. So it ain't the money, right? Mm -hmm. it's, you. It's, it's you, right? <laughs> so um, I think it helps to be responsible yeah. about money. And that means don't buy crap you don't need. Yeah. Right. It means don't overextend yourself. It means don't try to do, you know, buy too big of a house or too fancy a car or too expensive clothes or walking around with a, a Louis Vuitton handbag just because you want to impress other people. Well, right. most of the time, I'd say 99% of the time, people really don't give a damn about you one way or the other. No. Nobody cares about you as much as you care about you. Right. So... Uh, if, if you're responsible about money and you know, you're not heavily in debt or you're living within your means, the rest of life becomes easier because you're not under the constant strain of paying next month's bills. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a child of the fifties. I grew up in the fifties and in the fifties, most households were one income household. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was not always, but it was usually the man mm -hmm. who was making the money and the woman was doing the harder job mm -hmm. of taking care of the house and the children and the social relationships. Yeah. And it was doable because people didn't feel like they needed to have two BMWs or they needed to have a 5,000 square foot house or they needed to send their children to expensive private schools. Mm -hmm. They sent their kids to the public schools. They had one car. Most, most of them had one car. Uh, the house was fairly modest. Of course, a new house in the fifties was probably 10, $15,000, but that's a different story. Um, <laughs> Not like it, uh, no. but people had a more realistic outlook, yeah, on money. And another thing that changed is in, and I I know I sound like an old fuddy duddy when I'm talking about this, but that's okay. Um, people in the fifties uh, looked at uh, at people who had built successful businesses or had their own businesses with admiration and wanted to be like them. Right. And, and now people resent people who have taken risks and built successful businesses or become successful in some other way. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at those people with admiration, yeah. we look at them with resentment. And there are, there are more opportunities out there now than there ever have been Yeah, because of technology and because it's a worldwide economy. Now, you know, 50, 60 years ago, nobody thought about doing business in Indonesia or Africa or China yeah. or Australia or whatever. You can do business everywhere now. And there are, there are uh, ways to make money if that's what's important to you more opportunities now than there ever have been but we've become i think envious and risk averse at the same time mm -hmm. 
you know, we want what other people have, but we're not willing to take the same risk yes. that, 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 that those people took to get where they are. Exactly. Right? Exactly. 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 Let me, I got a question for you. Since we this month is talking about um, the act of balancing. For you, what would be your advice? What would be your advice for someone needing to balance their lives and find joy on an everyday basis. If you can just bring it all to one and say, look, you could take my advice or not, but try these things to help balance your life. Well, I think ba balance is misunderstood, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean everything's equated. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's times if you've got a deadline at work or something has to be done, I mean, work is going to put your life out of balance for mm -hmm. a period of time. But if you want, if you want to balance your life first, as I mentioned, take the best care of yourself that you can get yourself in as good a physical shape. Cause that's the engine that drives everything else. If you don't have your health, you don't have crap. You can't, it yeah. doesn't matter. Um, uh, so take care of yourself first and learn to take control, own the decisions that you make. Everybody makes decisions, but a lot of people want to blame. If, if something doesn't go, you make a decision, something doesn't go well. The first thing you're doing is looking around for somebody else to blame. Well, mm -hmm. you made the decision. If you're in a bad relationship at one point or another, you made a decision to get into that relationship. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And the same thing applies to addictions. Yeah. Let's say you're a, you're, let's say you, you're an alcoholic at this mm -hmm. point in your life. Well, at some point in your life, you sure. made a decision to take that first drink, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So who's to blame really, if you're an alcoholic, you can blame everybody else, but I don't, most people, nobody's holding a gun to your head and saying, take a drink. Right. It could be peer pressure. It could be societal pressure. You could be at a party or something like that. And people are saying, what do you mean you don't want to have a drink? Well, sometimes you got to have a little self-discipline. Yeah. And say, no, no, I, that's, it's not what I'm going to do. And if well, they make, well, if they make funny for that, um, so be it. Right. That's those not, are not the people you need to be around with. That's not exactly. Mm -hmm. Those are not the people you need to be around. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, doctor, this has been a very interesting conversation. It has. It really has. Oh, thank you. It's it been really fun has. for me, too. <laughs> but we have come to the conclusion of it. We are here at the end of the show so are there any last words that you have like where can they find your book i know you somewhere on social media where they can find you i am um, yeah get okay it. they can buy they can buy my book on amazon it's also available on audible i went in the studio and did an audio version which was fun and interesting i'd never done that before so that's my own voice if you buy the audio audible version of my book it's my own voice um you can find me on LinkedIn, Angelo Valenti, PhD. My website is angelovalenti.com. And you can also buy my book on my website. Uh, you can buy an, uh, a signed copy of my book on the website. Um, I'm on Facebook, Angelo Valenti. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Angelo Valenti author. Um, I'm on TikTok too. I just got on tiktok so i've i've done a few videos i got like 10 followers or something on tiktok but i just i just started posting videos and they're usually little funny stories or stories with a moral to them um because you know i'm not believe me i don't want to be a so in an, an influencer i really don't, i really don't that's a, um but i'm uh, yeah and uh I'm on X also. Don't I post a little bit on that, but mostly Instagram and Facebook is where you'll find me. Okay. And please, if you buy, if you buy my book out there, please, first of all, please buy my book. It's a good book. You'll like it. Um, write a review on Amazon. I'd appreciate it. As you know, 
anything that can move the algorithm along is a good yeah. thing. So that's, that's yeah. what I do. Yeah. But th thanks for having me. No, it, this was fun. This was fun. And I, the, the audio, I can just imagine. So I'm going to go pick up the audio. I like to do audio. audio. I, I like to, that's how I read nowadays because I'm doing everything at one time, you know, so I like to hear it audible. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to pick it up because I can tell this is going to be very entertaining. Just the tone of your voice and the, the mannerism of your voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 I'm loving it. But again, thank you, Dr. Valente, for joining us and to our listeners for tuning in. I want you to remember that the journey to self-love and enjoying life is ongoing and it's OK. It's OK to seek simplicity and joy in small steps. So be sure to check out Dr. Valente's book, You're Making This Way Too Hard. And for more insights, you could, it's going to be on our website down above um, and, and our blog post as well. Oh, right? thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we're doing it big this season. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> we're doing it big this season. Yes, we are. And again, thank you for joining us. And make sure you guys join us uh, tomorrow for another episode of the Season of Self Love. So until then, keep embracing your joy. And remember, self-love isn't a part. It's a way of living. Take care. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovering and empowerment here at the Season of Self-Love podcast. Remember, embracing self-love is a continuous journey, and we're so glad to have you with us. So if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review. And don't forget to join our community on Facebook at Season of Self-Love. Connect with like-minded individuals who are also on their self-love journey. Now, if you have any questions or topics that you'd like for us to explore, we love to hear from you. Email us at seasonofselflove at gmail.com and let your voice be heard. So until next time, take a moment for yourself today and remember, you are worthy of love, joy, and all the beautiful things that life has to offer.